Okay, with these tests, we now are ready to try to pass them. Let's go first with this uh, warning message, and that is this one right here. Uh, so it, we need to go back to the user controller, so edit app controller users. And what we need right uh, here in this edit is we need to make sure that the user is, is logged in. And we could put in some code right here, but we're going to want to use this for more than this method. You're going to want to be able to check the user's logged in for other things. So we're going to do something um, called a before action. And its name describes what it is. Before we do any particular action, we want to run this code. So what we're going to do is we're going to ensure uh, correct user um, or ensure user logged in, something like that. And right now, we're going to only have it for our edit action. If we didn't put this only here, it would run this before action before every single one of, of these methods. And, and that's not what we want. So with, with this in mind, what we're going to do is ensure user logged in. So I'm just going to copy that and, and go to the end. We want to put this in private because we don't want to make us a new action. And we're going to create a new method called ensure user logged in. And what we want to do here is we want to check uh, for the, the user who's, who's logged in. Well, which uh, user should we have that's logged in? Well, we want the user that this edit method is trying to find. So we need to grab the user that we're trying to edit. So I'm going to take this out of here and I'm going to put it in here. And so now we have our, our user that we're, we're trying to log in. Now what we need to check is if that user is, is who's logged in. Uh, let's quick go to our helpers. Uh, yes, we want to save that that we've just been changing. We have this method here that tells us who the current user is. Um, but it would be nice if we could ask if someone else is the current user. So I'm going to create a new method that's similar but, but slightly different. And it's going to current user question mark. And it's going to be the passed in a user. And all we're going to do is we're going to test if current user is the same as a user that's passed in here. That's just a nice convenient convenience method. We, we don't need it, but it makes it a, a little bit uh, easier to read. So what we're saying is, is user the current user? Okay, and current user tells us who's, who's logged in. So if no one's logged in, that will be nil. It won't match. If person A is logged in and this is person B, they won't match. Only if person A is logged in and this is also person A, will these match here. So now that we have that, we can go back to our user's controller and what we can we say is uh, unless our user that we're trying to edit is the current user we want to have a problem. Well what do we want to do? We want to do two things. First we want this warning message to show up and we all know how to do that. That's our flash at the warning level and say um, not logged in as and oh, let's make this there we go as that so this is just saying hey well you're trying to edit this user but you're not logged in as as that person right there and then what we should really do here um, is we should stop this because if we don't stop this we're well let's see what happens here. So
So let's uh, save this and um, let's go ahead and run our server so that we can go to our web browser here. So let's say we want uh, users slash one. Let's edit. Oh, there is no user slash one. Let's uh, go user slash four. All right, couldn't find user without an ID. All right. Our current user method is failing because uh, our session parameter is nil. And so when we try to do user.find nil, we're erroring out. So we need to, to fix this uh, before we, we go on any, any further. Okay, so let's go back. This bug's always been in there. We just haven't hit it yet. So let's go back to our helpers, our login helper. Um, what we're going to do is uh, we can't call user.find if session is, is nil. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add this little if here. If session user ID. Okay, so we only call user.find if, if there's a session ID to help. If we now reload this, we get our message not logged in as Jane Doe, which comes from, let's go back there, control, users control. It comes from this warning right here. But what did it do? It still got this ability to edit that profile. We, in this flash, we identified that we weren't logged in, but we said, ah, no big deal, we'll just let you keep going on. Uh, one of the things about the, these actions here is if there's, these before actions, is if there's a problem, we can escape out of them by redirecting to, to somewhere else. So let's redirect back out to our, um, well, so they're not logged in. Let's redirect to our login path. Okay, so now, uh, this is really cool about this action. Because this before action, this ensure user logged in, has this redirect to in it, it doesn't go ahead and actually run our edit. Okay, instead, what it, it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and and fail okay so let's see here we've got that we can try rerunning this and now notice what it's, it says you're not logged in as Jane Doe please sign in okay so it has properly redirected us out of that and asked us to sign in. So we could sign in and and it, it would do that. So let's let's go ahead and try to run our tests now. So bundle exec our spec and see what uh, we've got for for our errors now because we should have caught this warning and and we should be good. So, oh my goodness, we've got a bunch of, of failures here. What's going on here? So let's go to the first one and, and see what... Okay. So let's go to to this page right here, spec features users page, line 112. So spec features users pages, line 112. 
okay? Look what we did. We decided to edit that user by directly going and visiting that user path, but we didn't log in. And so now that we're trying to catch people who are logged in, all of the rest of these fail because we didn't log in first right here. So we need to log in here as well. Okay? And we have, if we edit spec features authorization pages, we have the code to do login here. So we already know how to log in. We shouldn't repeat this code. This is code that's going to be used over again. So we want to save this code so that we can use it in, in multiple places. So I'm going to create a new file for our tests. So it's going to be inspect support. And I don't think I have that directory yet. So make your spec support. OK. That is the directory where you put functions that are helpful for your RSpec to um, succeed. So we're going to create a file called spec support. And let's just call it login, because this is going to store the information we need to be able to, to log in. And we're going to write that. We have to go back, spec features, authorization pages. And let's make it real easy. The, let's make the thing look like this. We, we will call login, and we will pass it the person we want to log in. And so I'm going to take these, I'm going to delete it out of here, and edit spec support login. And that's what I want to do when we log in. So our method is going to be called login, and it takes a, a user as a parameter. And that's what we're going to do when we log in. So now we visit the login path. We fill in the username, password, and log in. So we now have a method to be able to support logging in. We can go back to our features, and this is our user pages. And now what we can do is we can say we want to log in as that user and, and use that code that we had before. And this makes sense. If we want to edit that user, we better log in as, as that user first. So now we can run our tests again. And hopefully a bunch of these failures that we just saw go away because now we've logged in as that, that user and the code we just wrote to, to check for those isn't cut anymore. Okay, now we're down to just a, a few problems here. Okay, our edit profile error we had before, we haven't looked at that yet. Okay, and ah, oh, let's, let's look at this. If we go back here and we go to uh, line 143. This is the case where we tried to edit a non-existent user. All right. And the problem is that when we edited our controller and grabbed from our edit, uh, I took the line that's, that that um, I took this line but I didn't take the lines that caught that find from failing. So let's grab these as well. And um, let's just put those down here. So now if we try to find that user, it's going to throw an error and we get that unable to, to find user message here. So you all, this is one of the reasons why test driven development is so nice. I made one change and I had two errors. One was in my tests, one was uh, in my code that didn't do the right thing. I make those changes, now we're back down to this, this edit profile error 
right here. And we can uh, fix this by just um, seeing what we say when we edit a profile. So let's go edit app views users edit. Um, and we don't have a header for that. So let's, let's make a header. And let's just say edit profile. All right. So now we've got that text in there. We can go ahead and run our test. And we should be very happy. We have fixed things exactly the way we want. And so now you've got this idea. Let me go back to the code that, now that that's green that if you use a before action like this you will and you place those in judicious places and you put the right code in there because these, this is not the only before action that you're going to have to add to your code if you do this then you will be able to pass all the tests that I write next so I'm gonna do write some more tests I'll give a quick overview of, of those tests and then you're up, ready to write the code to ensure those tests pass